Welcome to the snapshot of Manage Your Day Today. Build your routine, find your focus, and sharpen your creative mind by Jocelyn K. Glee. Here, we'll explore the key insights from Manage Your Day Today. Introduction Creative professions are allowing more people to leave the traditional office world and join the gig economy. The advantage of becoming a graphic designer or web developer is that you can work from anywhere, right? But what if your productivity suffers and you find yourself struggling to meet deadlines or focus on the task at hand? If you feel like you're just surviving instead of thriving, it's probably time for a new routine. Because creative work is personal, it can be equal parts rewarding and exhausting, which means it can take a toll on your mental health and quickly lead to burnout. To make the most of turning your art into a career, it's necessary to set up a little structure. This snapshot will give you the basics to do just that. Building a rock-solid routine When you think of a working artist, you probably think of someone working out of their own studio or a perfectly decorated home office. This mythical creative person takes regular breaks during the workday just to explore and play with their creativity. But the reality is that most creatives are working through quick turnarounds, bizarre project scopes, and uncontrollable environments like co-working spaces or coffee shops. Instead of leaving inspiration up to whimsy, it requires a framework. Just like your business requires structure to keep running, inspiration needs some structure to drive your career or business. To build a better, more productive framework, prioritize your creative work, especially the portion that depends entirely on you and doesn't require involvement from others. Prioritizing creativity also means limiting outside communication. When laying the groundwork for an effective routine, keep the following in mind. Prioritize creative work during times when your energy levels are at their highest. Limit your commitments and keep your to-do list short. Make creative triggers, such as music and surroundings, part of your routine. Start and end your day at the same time every day. In addition to a routine, you must learn to harness the power of frequency, as the frequency that you do creative work determines the quality of the work. Frequency encourages momentum so that it takes less effort to become engaged with projects and knock out assignments. Incorporating frequency into your routine also helps with productivity and makes higher achievements more attainable. While routine and frequency are both critical components to finding success and getting things done, renewal is equally important. Work is rarely completed or completed well by people who are constantly burning out or forcing themselves to run on empty. Incorporating renewal usually involves lifestyle changes, including prioritizing sleep, taking an actual lunch break, or starting the day with the most difficult tasks. All these things will also put you in a better mood and help you find more satisfaction in your work. Finding Focus in a Distracted World Creatives and small business owners need to be masters in prioritizing and delegating tasks for themselves on a daily basis. If you approach your work without a plan, it's all too easy to take a seat at your workstation and find yourself unable to decide on what to tackle first. Should you process invoices, pick up work on a project already in progress, or start your day with a fresh new project? Before you know it, you've wasted half an hour just trying to decide where to start. When will you possibly have time for your creative work? The solution to this is scheduling time just for creative work. You can do this in the form of scheduled, focused blocks that aren't just viewed as free time to move around when other things come up. Make a commitment to follow through when you schedule a focused block. You can use them to delegate time for focused, creative tasks or just open brainstorming. Encouraging more time dedicated to creativity is a huge win, as is limiting multitasking as much as possible. You can't expect your brain to simultaneously focus on several things for hours at a time and still have the same creative drive at the end. Multitasking includes trying to watch the news while processing information from a book or constantly pausing your work to answer emails. Various studies show that it takes significantly longer to complete tasks when you jump from task to task. If you're having trouble completing tasks or shaping ideas, dedicate sprints of time to work on one task with breaks dedicated to entertainment or communications. Because of all our modern-day distractions, it may seem impossible to dedicate time to creative work or to focus solely on one task. People become distracted at work for various reasons, and most aren't intentional. For example, communication is constant, from emails to social media to phone calls, and it's easy to give in to temptation for short-term satisfaction, such as scrolling through Twitter or answering unimportant messages. Because of this, it may be time to reconsider constant connectivity. 
You can also sharpen your focus during your time off, both in the short windows between meetings or in your leisure time at home. Try to focus on incorporating ways of engaging your mind with your surroundings or with other information outside of your work. For example, you can find entertainment, such as podcasts or audiobooks, that require concentration. This encourages discipline and helps build better focus habits. In addition, focus on being present throughout your day. Instead of trying to send a couple of emails during a five-minute break between meetings, use that time to listen to your thoughts or make observations about what's around you. Having the right amount of stimulation in any given day is a balancing act. The goal is to encourage better concentration by actively and consciously engaging your brain. Taming your tools. Have you ever gone a full week without using your cell phone for anything other than making calls? What about putting away the laptop for an entire vacation or taking a break from social media? These ambitious goals are often referred to as digital detoxes because of how deeply these tools are cemented into daily routines. People simultaneously want to escape technology but also can't stop themselves from engaging with it at every opportunity. Technology and computers are filled with potential, but they're also filled with all the distractions that impede productivity and creativity. You may be surprised to learn that email is the enemy of productivity, yet it's how most companies interact with customers and employees. Rather than jump at every email, you should learn to control your relationship with your inbox. To make email feel a little bit more bearable, try these tips. Identify your complex goals or long-term objectives. Write these on a post-it and stick it to your monitor. While checking email, start making connections on how your correspondences connect to those objectives. Stay away from the threads that don't really involve you. If you get copied on an email as a formality, don't respond unless you truly have something to contribute. How and when to use social media at work has become an ever-increasing discussion. Twitter and Facebook are excellent sources of mindless scrolling, but using these tools with intention may fulfill another purpose at work. So, if you must log in, stick to completing your main goal that contributes to what you're working on and close out of the platform as soon as that goal is reached. When it comes to writing or sharing, make sure what you post has real value. Don't write just to maintain a presence or receive attention. Screen time provides instant gratification. It's entertainment that you don't need to work for because it's readily available by opening a new tab or grabbing a remote. Even for people with active lifestyles, this has devastating consequences. Researchers estimate that one hour of watching television reduces life expectancy by 21.8 minutes. This is because people tend to slow their breathing while watching television or working on a computer. Known as screen apnea, this shallow breathing limits oxygen and causes stress on the body, and this behavior even contributes to stress-related diseases. While it may sound ridiculous, remember to breathe while working on a laptop or watching TV. So how can you limit your screen time? Unfortunately, the assumption is that people are available almost all the time, even outside of working hours. This constant availability makes it seem like your requests, news, and emails all require a sense of urgency. But if everything is categorized as urgent, it's easy to become lost and overwhelmed. To combat this, set boundaries and give coworkers an alternate way to contact you during real emergencies. Your body and brain will thank you. Sharpening your creative mind. If you've turned a side hustle into your full-time career or are involved in a role that requires creative thinking on a daily basis, congratulations. Flexing your creative muscles as part of your job is extremely rewarding and merges your passions with the responsibilities that occupy most of your waking hours. However, it's important to develop some good habits to avoid creative burnout or zapping all your creative energy. When was the last time you engaged in your craft without monetizing the result or started working on something just for you? If it's been a while, that's normal, but it's time to change that habit. Unnecessary creation or engaging in your art just for yourself is a worthy investment of your time. Even if you write a few pages of goofy dialogue you'd never use or sketch something you'd never want anyone to see, taking the time to explore your creativity without expecting an end result should be an essential part of your routine. This practice encourages you to take risks, explore different ways of solving problems or coming up with ideas, and have fun with your skills instead of only using them for work. If all else fails and you feel like your creative mind is running on empty, you may need to trick your brain into creative productivity. For example, 
Try looking for inspiration in places that have absolutely nothing to do with what you're working on. Encourage yourself to look at a variety of things throughout the day, not just your current project. You can also try blocking out days for certain creative endeavors. This strict scheduling is beneficial because it prepares you to maximize your creative output at that specific time, instead of trying to chip away at it every day. A significant factor of creative burnout is constantly striving for perfection. Perfectionism is an admirable trait in creatives, but only if you know how to channel it. If you're at the point where you won't start working on something until the ideal time of day, or until you're at an ideal energy level or mood, this is harming your productivity. Before you know it, you're facing a big deadline with little time to complete the work. This is where perfectionism management comes in, and you must learn to be a creative pragmatist. Seeking perfectionism can also make creatives feel stuck in their endeavors. When inspiration starts fading, don't be afraid to set your project down and focus on something else, even if it's just for a few hours. Allow yourself to express frustration in healthy ways and identify what's making you feel self-conscious in your work, and use that as motivation. Creative work is the most personal type of work, because your output depends on your ability to come up with ideas and turn them into something. It's important to realize that you won't be able to produce the same quality or amount of work every day. Allow your creativity to ebb and flow, and don't beat yourself up during a particularly difficult day. Conclusion Creative work is both challenging and personal, and challenging because it's personal. Productivity and creativity ruts often run parallel to each other, and navigating your way out is an exercise in self-awareness. Being more in tune with what allows you to focus and what keeps you motivated will help you maintain productivity and grow your love for your work in the long run. All this starts with dedicating yourself to making incremental changes and incorporating those into your new and improved routine. In this snapshot, you learned how to build a rock-solid routine to set yourself up for productivity. You also discovered how to keep yourself focused, even amid all of today's technology and other distractions. By taking control of your relationship with social media and email, you can harness the power of your tools and use them to help you be more productive, not less. Lastly, you explored ways to keep your creative mind sharp and avoid creative burnout by letting go of perfection. It's time to start thriving while doing the work you love. And it all starts with just a little bit of structure. About Jocelyn Cakely Jocelyn Cagley is a writer and editor who is obsessed with productivity and sharing how people can feel more creatively engaged in their daily work. She's the author of four other books, including Unsubscribe, How to Kill Email Anxiety. She hosts a podcast called Hurry Slowly, which addresses how slowing down can increase productivity and connection. She lives in Portland, Oregon. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of Manage Your Day Today by Jocelyn Cagley. If you liked what you heard, then make sure to explore the rest of our Snapshot Library to continue gaining key insights from nonfiction books in a matter of minutes. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you liked what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.